Have you ever noticed that whenever you go to the supermarket, the oranges are always stacked in the exact same shape? A pyramid. There's a mathematical reason for this. It turns out that if you want to fit the most oranges in the least amount of space, the best way to stack them is in a pyramid shape. Any other way of stacking them will be less efficient, say on the corners of a cube, or on the corners of a weird hexagonal prism, or anything like that. But how do we actually prove that this is true? The statement that the pyramid is the best packing is called Kepler's conjecture. This problem is very hard, and it was open for nearly 300 years. It was resolved just a few years ago by Thomas Hales in 2005. His proof was a monumental achievement, over 120 pages long. It involved deep techniques from graph theory, optimization, topology, and lots of computer calculations. But this video is about dimension 8, so how does that come in? Before we asked, what is the densest packing of three-dimensional spheres in three-dimensional space? What about n-dimensional spheres in n-dimensional space? Well, we already know the answer when n equals 3, it's the pyramid. For n equals 2, we're asking for the densest arrangement of circles in the plane. First, draw a line of circles. In the gaps between each of the circles, you draw a second line of circles, and so on. This is called a hexagonal lattice. But as soon as you go to four dimensions and beyond, we know very little. We don't even have a good guess as to what the densest packing is. To make matters worse, there's no obvious pattern for the densest packing as you vary the dimension n. But in 2016, something extraordinary happened. A mathematician named Marina Biazovska proved the optimal sphere packing in eight dimensions. She showed that there was a structure called the E8 lattice in eight dimensions, which gives the optimal packing. Now the miracle here was that her proof was just 15 pages long. It was extraordinarily elegant. And in recognition of this work, she was awarded the Fields Medal in 2022. In this video, I want to explain how she proved it. But this is Fields Medal level work, so it's not for the faint of heart. Because of that, I'm going to assume some prerequisite knowledge for this video. Namely, I'm going to assume that you're familiar with the Fourier transform and also some basic linear algebra. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we should precisely define what we mean by sphere packing. The key word to keep in mind here is lattice. Let's start in 2D space. A lattice is just a grid. Here are two examples. Every lattice has two basis vectors, v1 and v2. Some terminology. The length of the smallest vector in this basis is called the minimal vector length of the lattice. Let's call it r. And this square containing both of the basis vectors is called the fundamental cell of the lattice, which I'm shading in blue. Lattices are important because every lattice determines a sphere packing. How so? We'll just place a sphere centered at each point. If the minimal vector length is r, then each sphere will have radius r over 2. Just to clarify, not every sphere packing has to come from a lattice. This is just a way to construct a sphere packing. What is the density of this packing? Well, intuitively, it's the proportion of space that's occupied by the spheres. Precisely, for every cell in the lattice, there's one sphere of radius r over 2. So this is equal to the volume of the sphere of radius r over 2 divided by the volume of the fundamental cell. The density of this packing over here is pi over 4, so approximately 78.54% of the space is occupied by spheres. But this lattice over here has density pi over 2 root 3, so about 90.69% of the space is occupied by spheres. This generalizes very cleanly to n dimensions. In general, a lattice in Rn is the set of all integer linear combinations of v1 to vn. Here v1 to vn are n linearly independent vectors. The fundamental cell of this lattice is the set of all linear combinations of these vectors where the coefficients are between 0 and 1. Just like in the 2D case, a lattice determines a sphere packing. I'm drawing a 2D image here because that's what we can visualize. And just like before, the density of this packing is defined to be the volume of the sphere of radius r over 2 divided by the volume of the fundamental cell. So here's the question we have to answer. Is there a lattice that achieves the densest sphere packing in Rn? The first big breakthrough in this case was by mathematicians Henry Cohn and Noam Elkies. They attacked the problem using a completely different branch of math, namely the Fourier transform. So what is the Fourier transform? If we have a function f from r to r, its Fourier transform is a function f hat, also from r to r. It's defined as follows. f hat of y is the integral over all real numbers of f of x times e to the 2 pi i x y dx. A technical point, 
For this integral to converge, we require that f is a so-called Schwartz function, meaning that it and all its derivatives are rapidly decreasing. More generally, if f is a function from Rn to R, then its Fourier transform is also a function from Rn to R. It's defined now as an integral over Rn, and we add a dot product here, because x and y are now vectors. With this in mind, here's what Cohn and Elkies proved. Suppose that there exists a function f from Rn to R, and a positive real number r satisfying these properties. First, f of 0 should equal f hat of 0, and they should both be positive. Second, f hat of y is always greater than or equal to 0 for all y in Rn. And finally, f of x is less than or equal to 0 for all x with magnitude greater than or equal to r. If there exists such a function f, then every lattice sphere packing in Rn has density, at most, the volume of the n-ball of radius r over 2. Let's parse this for a moment. If you can produce a function f and a number r with these properties, first of all, f of 0 equals f hat of 0, which are both positive, f hat is non-negative, and f is eventually non-positive, then you will have proved that every lattice sphere packing in Rn has density at most this number. Here's how they prove this. Suppose you have a lattice L in Rn. Assume that the minimal vector length is r. You can always scale the lattice up or down so that this is true. We want to show that the packing density of L is less than or equal to the volume of the ball of radius r over 2. The proof relies on a key identity about the Fourier transform, called the Poisson summation formula. It says that if you sum f over all integers k, it equals the sum of f hat over all integers k. This generalizes to Rn. If you sum f over all integer tuples k in z to the n, it equals the sum of f hat over all k in z to the n. We'd like to replace zn here with any lattice L. Now this is almost true, except that you have to multiply the right-hand side by 1 over the volume of the fundamental cell of the lattice. Now there's a slight technical problem with this equation. I've put the details in the bottom of the screen if you're interested, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to gloss over this. Now let's write the left-hand side as f of 0 plus the sum over all the non-zero terms of the lattice. Likewise, Let's write the right-hand side as f hat of 0, plus the sum over all the non-zero terms of the lattice. By our assumption, all these terms over here are less than or equal to 0. So we can remove them and replace the equality with an inequality. Again, by our assumption, all these terms over here are greater than or equal to 0. So we can remove them as well. Rearranging the equation and remembering that f of 0 equals f hat of 0, we get that the volume of the fundamental cell is at least 1. But remember that we defined the density of the packing to be the volume of a ball divided by the volume of a fundamental cell. Since the volume of a fundamental cell is at least 1, the density of the packing is at most the volume of the ball. Here's a graph of the densest known packing and here's the upper bound given by Cohn and Elkies' proof. Note that in dimensions 8 and 24, these two graphs touch. So if you could construct a magic function, f, in dimensions 8 or 24 with all these properties, that would prove that the best-known packing is actually optimal. That's precisely what Vyazovska did in 8 dimensions. But what is the best-known packing in 8 dimensions? I never actually told you. It's called the E8 lattice. Fair warning, the definition is a little bit technical. It's defined as the set of all elements in R8 such that every coordinate is an integer or every coordinate is a half integer. A mixture of integers and half integers is not allowed. On top of that, the sum of all the coordinates must always be an even integer. In symbols, it's given as follows. The set of all vectors xi in z to the 8 union z plus 1 half to the 8 such that the sum of the xi is 0 mod 2. A key fact is that the distance between neighboring points in this lattice is the square root of 2, which means you can place a sphere at each lattice point with radius root 2 over 2. For a long time, mathematicians expected that the E8 lattice achieved the densest packing in R8, largely because nobody could find anything better. But remember, Nome and Elkies proved that if you could construct a magic function f in R8 satisfying all these magical properties, then the E8 lattice would be the densest packing, the only problem was, how? I mean, how are you going to construct such a magic function out of thin air? Luckily, Vyazovska had a crucial edge. 
Her earlier work was not about sphere packing, but it was in a completely different branch of math, namely modular forms. Modular forms are strange functions from number theory, and they have a habit of showing up everywhere, for example in the proof of Fermat's last theorem. Vyazovska realized that she could use modular forms to construct a magic function. Modular forms are functions with a lot of symmetry. Here's a picture of a modular form, called the Jacobi theta function. We can already see some symmetry. For example, the function repeats in every vertical strip. Zooming in even further, we can see some more symmetry. It looks somewhat symmetrical about the middle axis, but the colors seem to be inverted. But this isn't the only example of a modular form. There are many other examples. This is called the weight for Eisenstein series. Notice that it also repeats in every vertical strip. Each leaf over here has two fronds, which is half of four, hence the weight four. Here's the weight six Eisenstein series. Each leaf has three fronds. Here's the weight eight Eisenstein series. Here's weight 10. To define the magic function, we first need to define two auxiliary functions, phi and psi. The first function phi is defined using the Eisenstein series. The second function psi is defined using the Jacobi theta function. Here's the magic function f of x. It's defined as sine squared of pi times the norm of x squared over 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity of t squared phi of i over t plus psi of i t times e to the minus pi norm of x squared t dt. The phi is underlined in orange and the psi is underlined in pink. This is the magic function we're after. This x is an element of R8, so it's actually a vector. Full disclosure, I don't even have the slightest idea how someone would come up with these formulas, but Vyazovska shows that they satisfy all the properties that a magic function needs to satisfy. Even in her final paper, she doesn't explain how she discovered the formulas, she just writes it down and then checks that it works. But with this, the sphere packing problem in dimension 8 is now solved. But remember I said earlier, there are two points where these two graphs meet, dimension 8 and dimension 24. So can we also construct a magic function for dimension 24? And it turns out that you can. Shortly after Vyazovska published her proof, mathematicians Henry Cohn, Abhinav Kumar, Stephen Miller, and Danilo Radchenko collaborated with Vyazovska to extend her methods to prove the sphere packing problem in dimension 24. But beyond these two cases, things get much murkier. We don't know how to solve the sphere packing problem in any other dimension, even in dimension 4. So right now, it seems like this problem is going to remain open for a very long time. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.